Are you a new Komodo grill owner? Maybe you're in the market for one. Maybe you've had one for a while and you're just trying to step up your game. It doesn't matter what brand you have. In this video, I'm covering 12 mistakes that Komodo grill owners make and I'm gonna give you three bonus tips at the end. Let's get into it. What's up everybody? Welcome back to Patio. My name is Jake. You're watching Rum and Cook. Today, we're breaking out the Komodo Komodo. We're talking about the 12 mistakes that Komodo grill owners make. Now, it doesn't matter if you've got a big green egg, a Komodo Joe, a Primo, a Blaze. There's all kinds of different brands out there. Majority of these tips are gonna apply to all brands. There are a couple that are Komodo Komodo specific, but other than that, no matter what brand you have, you're gonna get some value out of this video. Before we get started with this video, let's address the elephant in the room. Yeah, there's a water over here. Now I know it's five o'clock somewhere, but that rule only applies if it's 12 o'clock in my local time zone or greater, and it's not. But don't you worry, I'll be having a rum and coke soon. Let's get into tip number one, mistake number one, excuse me, not letting these guys preheat long enough. How do these work? Where they shine is that they suck up heat and radiate that heat energy into your food from all around. You get a really juicy result and a very well cooked product. You can't really duplicate it on any other type of grill, but it only works when you preheat these long enough. So, you know, if you're not letting it preheat, you might as well be using a Weber kettle. And there's nothing wrong with a Weber kettle, but you're gonna get your direct heat and you're gonna get your convection air moving around it, but you're not gonna get the radiant heat, which is where these guys shine. So, once you get up the temperature, let it preheat for 15, 20 minutes. Get your dome hot. If you're making pizza, preheat it even longer. You know, if you can let that run an hour, let your pizza stone get up the temperature, you're gonna get some great pizza. Now this guy specifically has two layers of refractory cement and some insulation and a tile, uh, the tiles. So this guy really takes closer to 30 minutes before it's gonna be ready to cook on. Not a big deal, just be aware of that and plan for that when you cook. Mistake number two, overcorrecting vents and chasing temperatures. Now how do these guys work? We take air in through a vent system, we go in through some lump charcoal, and we come out a top vent. The more air, the more heat. Very simple. On the Komodo Komodo, we've got a half moon style vent here on the left that's adjustable, and then we've got one with holes that go from a big one all the way down to a small one. It also opens up. The more air we let in and the more air we let out, the hotter it gets. What you wanna do, especially when you're new, get yourself a log book and start to record your dial settings. It'll take you 10, 15 cooks before you're gonna get comfortable with it, but it's really not that bad. It's not intimidating. You just gotta play with it and then you'll start to learn some things. The big thing is, you know, if you've got some markers up top, like the Komodo Joe, a 16th of an inch or an eighth of an inch is gonna have a big impact. So if you're only off by 10 degrees, try 16th of an inch. Wait 10 minutes, see where you end up and then adjust again. On this guy, it's an eighth of a turn to a quarter of a turn is a big adjustment. Make the adjustment and wait and see what happens. If you don't do that, you're gonna be hating life and you're gonna do, be chasing temperatures a long time. <laughs> you don't wanna go through that process. You won't enjoy cooking on this. So be patient and see what happens and then you can learn your dials, right? For me, I know on the half moon side, if I'm open about a quarter way, eight to a quarter way and I've got a quarter up here, I know I'm gonna be in that 250, 300 degree range. If I wanna go hotter, I give it a little bit more down and then maybe I'll go up to a turn and a half, right, for 450-ish. And then when you go to pizza mode, you open it up and go, All right? You're gonna learn these temperatures. It just takes some playing around and getting used to it. It's part of the fun. Don't let it intimidate you. Just take your time and don't overcorrect. Mistake number three, not using quality lump. Now lump is your fuel source. That's what gives you your heat. It's also a flavor source. So some lump is gonna burn really hot, some is not gonna burn as hot, and some is gonna burn hot and it's just gonna fizzle out. This is usually the cheaper lump. It just doesn't have the density and the staying power to stay hot for a long period of time. So waste the money, buy some good quality lump. In addition to that, some is gonna be you know, full of that charcoal flavor, some is gonna be mild, some is gonna be sweet. Komodo Komodo has a coffee char, 
that's made from coffee wood, very unique flavor. They also have a cocoa char that's made from coconut shells. Now it's neutral, it has no flavor whatsoever. The goal there is that you control your flavor 100% and you're only gonna get the smoking woods that you're putting into it. But there's a lot of variation in, in charcoal. Now I can't speak to all the brands. I've only tried really a handful, right? I, I have the cocoa char, I've got the coffee char, I've got lots of experience with Komodo Joe's Big Block and Fogo has got a couple different brands or products in their line. I've used a bunch of them and I actually have uh, Jealous Double in there. We're going to make a video on that soon. It's, uh, you're seeing a lot more of that, so I wanted to give it a try out, but there's a lot of different brands out there. So just buy some quality ones and experiment. Again, it is flavor, so you may find one that you like on steak, but you don't like it on pizza and vice versa. So don't be ex afraid to experiment, buy a bag at a time, buy some different brands and just have some fun. Mistake number four, not lighting enough lump, right? When you're smoking 225, 250, maybe 275, you only need a very little bit of charcoal burning to get up that temperature and maintain that temperature. If you're trying to get up to 450, five, maybe 600 plus, you need a lot of lump burning to get up and maintain that temperature. So when people are new, they load up their basket, but they start one small area and the vents are all open, but they can never get up to those temperatures and they get frustrated. The secret to that is just light a bigger area. Now here's kind of my rule of thumb. A lot of times I use these Komodo Joe wax cubes, wax squares, whatever you want to call them. If I'm doing a smoke, one is all you need, right? 225 to 275. If I'm gonna go above 300, I'm gonna put two in and I'm gonna light two different spots. Now they'll join together, but what'll happen is I'll have a larger portion of lump burning at one time, and that's gonna allow me to get up to those higher temperatures and maintain them. Mistake number five, filling up your basket too much with lump. Now this one sounds a little weird, but the problem is, is if you put too much lump in it, it doesn't get a chance to breathe. A lot of the designs out there, they've got little air holes around them. And what happens is if you put a whole bunch of lump in there, you're really, you're kind of smothering your fire and not allowing it to get up the temperature properly. So it kind of works the opposite. Now I know, for example, on this guy, four pounds of charcoal will allow me to burn at 450 for an hour and a half or two. It doesn't take a lot of charcoal to burn for a long period of time. If I'm gonna do a smoke, I, I run a quarter basket in this and I can smoke all day long. So unless you're doing pizza and a lot of pizza, you very rarely need to have a full basket in there, right? Half basket is probably gonna do you. Now it depends on your brand. So don't take this as gospel or anything like that. But what I'm trying to tell you is don't fill up your basket, learn to use less uh, because there's just no point. Now, you can reuse it. What I do is, I, you know, there's always some left. You never get it perfect. I just mix the old with the new. The new tends to burn hotter and it's a little easier to light, so I always like to mix it up. But again, just don't overfill your basket because then your fire is not gonna burn as well as you want and you, you may struggle to get up to some temperatures depending on your brand. Mistake number six, heating these guys up too quickly. Now, there are some caveats here. The Kimono Joes, the Big Green Eggs, the Primos, if you heat them up quickly in the summer, it's not really that big a deal. All of them, if you heat them up too quickly in the winter, you're gonna crack. Now, this guy doesn't actually crack. This guy's designed to expand. Uh, but if you heat it up too quickly, what'll happen is there's grouting in here. It's a NASA grade grout that's designed to expand as this heats up. And when you heat it up too quickly, it'll crack the grout. Now it's not a big deal. It comes with a tube of grout. You put a little on your finger, you rub it across the seals. When it's hot, you let it cool down. The next day you come up with a sponge and you wipe it off and you're done. It'll, you'll never see the repair. It's super easy to do, but you can avoid that by not heating it up too quickly. Right? Just bring it up the temperature slowly. And again, all of them, if you heat them up too quickly in the winter, you're just gonna crack them. They're not designed to be heated that, that quickly, uh, especially when they're super cold. Mistake number seven is unique to the Komodo Komodo. I mentioned about this NASA grade grout that's there. You need to inspect this from time to time, right? Walk around, look for little cracks, put, heat it up, put some grout on it, and then clean it up the next day. 
Again, it's super easy to do. I'll make a video on it. It takes 10 minutes, uh, but you need to go around and inspect that because over time, as it uh, expands and contracts, especially if you do some cooks where you heat it up too quickly, you're going to find little cracks around here. And what happens is water will get behind the tiles and it's going to make your lid very, very heavy. You'll start cranking up your spring and all of a sudden you're still having a problem lifting it up because it's full of water, especially if you don't do the next tip. But all you got to do is just inspect this from time to time, walk around the whole thing and just put some grout in there and keep it all sealed up. If you happen to notice that this gets a little heavy, all you got to do is heat it up to five, 600 degrees and let it burn for a few hours. The water will, the inside will get hot and the water will evaporate and just come out. And then at the end, just grout it and the next day, wipe it down. Mistake number eight, not buying a grill cover for your grill. Now for the Komodo Komodo, we talked about the grout. If you miss a crack, keeping it covered will just help avoid water getting in there. Like I said, it's not that big of a deal, you can correct it, but just in general, Komodo grills are not inexpensive. So spend $100 or $200 on a cover and keep them covered. Not all of them are made up of stainless steel like this guy. They will rust in different spots. So if you keep it covered, you're just gonna get that many more years of enjoyment out of it. Mistake number nine, using too much smoking wood. Now you've got something like this because you like to smoke meat, you want some smoky brisket, you want some chicken, you want some ribs, some pulled pork, and the thought process when you're first starting out is kind of like more wood, more better. It doesn't work that way. When you put too much wood in there, what happens is now you're burning a fire that's not clean and you end up with a bitter smoky taste that's not enjoyable. In addition to that, lump is fairly predictable when it burns. You mix in a whole bunch of wood there, different densities, different moisture, different size chunks, and all of a sudden your temperatures are going all over the place because you have wood burning and not enough chump, uh, lump burning and you're chasing your temperatures. So not only do you get a product that you're not gonna enjoy as much, but you have a lot more work on your hands trying to keep your temperatures stable. So a good ratio for smoking wood is 5% to 95% charcoal. And then you can play with it, right? Some people don't like as much smoke at all and they might just throw in one you know, chunk for an entire cook and that's fine, that's the way they like it. S start with less and then build up, but really you don't wanna go too far beyond that 95% rule. Mistake number 10 follows up on mistake number nine nicely and that is not burning a clean wood fire. Lots of times I see videos where people get their grills up to temperature, they throw some wood chunks in there, white billow and smoke all over the place, and they're like, yeah, we're smoking. You're smoking, all right. And some dirty ass smoke. That dirty smoke is gonna make your food taste bitter. And if you have someone in your house that is just borderline on smoke, you're gonna destroy them because they're gonna hate it. What you wanna do is you wanna wait till that smoke cleans up. In the beginning, it's going to be white and thick and billowy. As it starts to clean up, it's gonna to go to a thinner white and eventually to a blue. And sometimes you can't even see it. Sometimes you gotta hold your hand up. I've got a nice green tree behind me in the spring so I can just go like this and I can see how much smoke I have. Now, I'm not saying you're never gonna have white smoke because you are gonna have white smoke. Uh, depending on how you set up your wood, it's gonna burn at different times and you're gonna get a little bit of white smoke, but it's already gonna be heated up and it's not, not gonna be that thick billowy smoke. That's where the problem is. So, you know, some people put their wood on top, some mix it in, some put it at the very bottom. You're gonna have to experiment and figure out what works for you. For me, it all depends on what I'm doing. There is nothing wrong with putting wood right on top of your, your lump, but you need to wait 10 or 15 minutes until it cleans up. I typically will bury it in amongst the charcoal so that I can get it burning at different times and get a lot more smoke flavor into my meat. Some people will put it at the very bottom and on long cooks, I'll do that from time to time as well. Uh, I like to mix it in a little bit just because it's, if it's at the very bottom, it might take a little while for that to start burning. And although yes, it's gonna burn and it's gonna go through the hot uh, coals and get really clean, it's gonna take a little while before that process starts and meat only takes smoke until about 165. So I like to make sure I've got some smoke going in there early, so I mix it in. 
you can do it however you want just the secret is make sure it's clean and it's not white and billowy smoke mistake number 11 not monitoring great level temperature so these guys all have a thermometer in the dome but what about at the great level here and at this great level these temps between here here and here are going to be far different if you're trying to smoke a pork butt at 250 and you're using your dome temperature it's not going to be accurate down here so what you do this is a thermalworks smoke x4 talked to them before they also have a two the four's got four pit probes you get yourself a pit probe they're slightly different they're rounded you can see it here you get yourself a grill clip you put it through here you clip it to your grill right by your meat and now you know exactly what temperature your grill level is at and when you want to smoke at 250 you're smoking at 250. you made it to mistake number 12 congratulations the sun's even coming out to celebrate we're talking about dome temp dome temp is still important if you're grilling or you're making pizzas or breads you want to know what your dome temp's at when you're making pizza especially if you think it's at 550 and that pizza's going to take eight or nine minutes if it's only at 450 in reality you're not going to have the nice crust underneath and it's going to take longer to cook it's just not going to give the result that you're looking for so you do want to adjust this it's super simple you just pull it out you stick it in boiling water you take a screw to it and then you adjust it to 212 water boils at 212 that way you know you're in accurate shape here and you want to do that once or twice a year as it gets hot and cold it just throws this out of whack you made it to the end i promised you some tips i covered some of these in my pellet grill video but they still apply the first one i can't stress enough and that's learning to cook to temperature right you can watch lots of videos you can learn a whole bunch of things out there but everyone's using different cookers everyone's using different quality of meat different weights different thicknesses there's different amounts of fat so you know learning to cook on temperature is critical to your success there is no reason for a boneless skinless chicken breast to be dry if it's dry that's on you you're cooking it wrong pull it off at 160 let it rest for 10 minutes it's going to be 165 ish when it's done and it's going to be delicious right whole chicken learn where the breast is at versus the leg pork there's no reason to cook it at 160 anymore you can cook it at 140 to 145 it'll have a slight hint of pink that's fine it'll be tender it's safe to eat but unless you're using a, a thermometer you're not going to know the right temperatures for it so same thing applies for steak there's a big difference between 125 and 135 when it comes to the temperature of the meat the actual temperature on your tongue the texture of the meat and the color of the meat right so if your guest wants medium you better know how to cook at the medium and using your fist and doing this little thing is not going to work use the thermometer right leads us to tip number two and that's just get a good quality thermometer having a good quality thermometer is critical to your success right thermalworks is a leader in the barbecue space i've been using them for over 10 years you'll see them on all the barbecue channels there's a reason right this is the mk4 this is discontinued now the one just came out um, but it works the same you got a digital uh, screen here that lights up and nicely rotates depending on what you're doing and in the case of the one it now tells you the accurate temperature in one second they're like 105 110 bucks whatever they are well worth the money you're going to buy it and it's going to last you many many years and it's just going to improve your product by a great deal I showed you this earlier this is the smoke x4 same company they have it too the great thing about this generation of it is that the x4 and x2 this works up to two miles away so i can see my pit temperatures i can see my meat temperatures and i can be over with my neighbor having a beer in his garage and i'm in control and it's just nice to have there's lots of products on the market there over here i've got the meter plus products so this is just the plus and then i've got the block here right the difference between these guys is is that this has no re repeater so you hook it up to your wireless and if you want to be able to walk through your house and look at your temperatures or anywhere else you need an ipad or a phone in the middle to repeat it 
right? When I first got this, it drove me up the wall because I'm in IT and my wireless is rock solid. I can walk over my entire property and control my Sonos, no problem. But this thing, I couldn't walk around and get my readings on. It was very frustrating. And then I realized what the problem was. I needed the block. The block's got the wireless repeater built into it. So now it works everywhere. The great thing about the meter series thermometers is that we've got temperature here of our meat and here we've got pit and it's wireless. It works in a rotisserie. So these are great thermometers. As you can tell, I've got just a few thermometers. I like them. Uh, I'm always playing with gadgets. So I buy a new one when it comes out and see, see what happens. The last one, and especially for this guy, I always talk about ZEP 505, but these tiles, that grease gets on there and ZEP 505 cuts through it like nothing, right? But I, the other thing you wanna do is you wanna look up a company called the Rag Company, get their microfiber cloths. These will not scratch your tiles. And if you're a car guy, you're gonna love this product. They've got a whole bunch of them. Um, I order them in all different colors, depending on if I'm doing my tires, my interior, exterior, polishing, whatever I am, but they've got, you know, lots of different options there. But get some of these and get some 505, and that'll just help keep this thing looking like brand new at all times. It works on stainless steel as well. Um, but you're going to want a, de a degreaser because when this guy's open, the smoke's coming out and this stainless steel piece is going to get black and the top will start to get black from all the soot and you can clean it up in two seconds. So that's all I got for tips for you today. Um, you know, thanks as always for watching. I appreciate you supporting the channel. We're going to get back into some cooking. We were supposed to be cooking actually this weekend, but the weather did not cooperate. Uh, you probably noticed that it changed a little bit throughout this video. I actually broke for a rainstorm in the middle, uh, but we are going to get back to some cooking. And we're, next thing we're doing uh, is a battle. We're going to do a calzone battle on all three grills. So we'll see that soon. And I'm doing some steak. I got to do some smash burgers on the Yoder. I mean, I got lots coming up. So if that interests you, uh, please give the video a thumbs up and subscribe while you're down there. Also, while you're here, check out these videos. And thanks as always for watching. I'll see you soon.